And I can't wait to hear this talk, Managing Emotions in Uncertain Times. So welcome, Deb Souter. Super excited to have you. Excited to be here. Thank you. All right, everyone. So great. We are living in uncertain times, right? Duh. You hear that a lot these days. We've been in uncertain times before, but why does this time feel so different? I hear people say, well, we've never had a pandemic like this before, or it's because we haven't dealt with this much tension and unrest in so many aspects of our society. Neither of which are true when we look at the last century. So what makes our current circumstances feel so devastating and catastrophic? I believe that for many of us, it has to do with our inability to manage our emotions, manage our our ourselves in uncertain times, manage unpredictability, and it has to do with fear. Our brains are always on high alert. We are constantly stimulated, often emotionally hijacked due to constant local, local, national, global changes, extreme speed of technological advancements, the bombardment of information, most of which seems to be negative, the unending focus on real and perceived storms and fires, and our demand for 24 seven productivity. And really, if we're honest, we just want what we want when we want it. It's understandable, the fear that comes with uncertainty. Uh, when we don't know who's sick and who isn't, we don't know if or when we'll lose our health, a loved one, our home, our job, our business, our kids' academic futures, or even, futures, or even lose the ability to put food on the table. It feels disastrous. The questions are never ending. We rail against the unfairness of it all, run from the black cloud that seems to follow us everywhere, or we become paralyzed and stuck in the nasty swamp of our fears. I know, I know, it's not all gloom and doom. It just may feel that way sometimes. I get it. I've known fear and uncertainty. For me, the past five years have been no picnic. Besides going through the lovely change that comes with being over the age of 50, I've lost the ability to recall simple everyday words, write emails that are efficient and coherent. I have gained back the 90 pounds of weight I worked so hard to let go of. I'm no longer able to perform on stage because I can't remember the words to songs I've sung hundreds of times. I've claimed bankruptcy, shut down my 15 year business only to end up working for the competition. And then deciding it's better for me to work on my own. So I started another business. I've been diagnosed with chronic immune deficiencies due to unconscious effects of past traumas I've worked years to no longer be a victim of. My brain has created deep cavernous. Oops, I lost my place here. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> cavernous. Uh, This is technology. This is another reason why you don't do what I do with a brain like mine. There we go. This in turn caused my brain to no longer be able to differentiate between physical, social, emotional pain, my heart to race like a freight train so my body cannot experience rest, and it's triggered the muscles in my legs to tighten up and pull my kneecaps out of place when I walk. No, I'm not telling you these things for sympathy, and I don't reside in victim land. I've already been there, done that in my life. Being in a victim mindset held me back from the life I wanted until I was 36 years old. I would not have had a business of 15 years, nor been blessed with the beautiful family I have today had I stayed in that swamp. Having been a social worker for 20 years prior to being a business owner, I've seen unimaginable trauma and the fallout that occurs from those who've been victimized by the hands of others, by systems, and by ignorance. I'm sharing this part of my story because often it is the story or the belief that we are our story that causes us the most pain and fear and hijacks our emotions. 
It is the story we cling to about ourselves, about others, and the circumstances we find ourselves in that prevents us from creating our vision of success as opposed to someone else's visions of success for us. Yes, I'm facing some obstacles in this season, and I'm learning how to change my mind about those obstacles, finding and creating new paths towards living out my purpose in life. As humans, we don't like uncertainty. In fact, we would rather know we're going to experience something painful than face the uncertainty of not knowing what's coming. Once our emotions are engaged due to uncertainty, danger, whether real or perceived, or other experiences that elicit an emotional response, our vision becomes cloudy. Next slide. We stop seeing clearly what is really happening and we start making decisions through that cloudy lens. This often leads us to responding in ways we haven't thought through and we tend to create unwanted messes that are worse than the original problems we started with. When these stressors and our reactions to them become a consistent occurrence, our immune system can be compromised and cause physical, mental, and emotional disease. Due to the stressors that have come with COVID, the American Psychological Association has stated that we are facing a national mental health crisis that could yield serious health and social consequences for years to come. If we do not put some new tools in our tool belts to manage our responses to the unpredictability of that which we cannot control, we will not only destroy our health, we will destroy the ability to see possibilities, to heal from adversity, to hope for a better tomorrow. Our emotions are not our enemies. I'm gonna say that again. Our emotions are not our enemies. They help us know where we are in our ability to acknowledge and respond to the good things and the bad things. Next slide. When we were cave people, our ability to fight, flight, or freeze protected us from being mauled or eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. However, over many centuries, we have learned to shut down, overanalyze, overreact to, or dismiss our emotions. I've worked and continue to work with people from all walks of life, witnessing time and time again that no matter what the emotional triggers are, some people are able to think before they react and others go right to fight, flight, or freeze response, no matter how big or how small others would perceive the issue to be. What really happens when you're in danger and emotionally hijacked? Well, your entire body is affected. Your sympathetic nervous system causes a flight or fight response to keep you alive. Even if you're not in real danger, your body wants to keep you safe. If your body senses a threat, it may freeze and look for any danger that may creep up on you. It raises cortisol, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. You feel anxious, angry, or afraid, and it shows up in your body language, even if you're trying to keep a straight face. You start sweating, your heart rate increases, your digestion slows down, and your blood vessels constrict. You may feel tension and even pain, or you may be, like some people, feel like running away. Your body may also react to stress by shutting down, or you freeze like a deer in headlights. My husband's heard that one before. You may feel numb, shame, a sense of feeling trapped, and in some situations, you may even pass out. Your digestive system slows down, your eyes become fixated, and you have difficulty speaking. Can you all think of the last time you felt like you lost your mind, or it felt like a grizzly bear was after you? How did your body feel right before the steam came out of your ears, or you hid in the bathroom, or you got wobbly in the knees? How have moments or maybe even weeks of being emotionally hijacked affected your ability to make decisions in your workplace or at home? And what were the results? Let's take a quick moment to understand what truly happens to your brain when you go into fight, flight, or freeze mode. So put your hand up in front of yourself. Think of your wrist like the brain stem, the part of your brain that's responsible for basic things like breathing and keeping your heart pumping. Your thumb, tucked in, sits in the middle just like the amygdala is in the center of your brain. The amygdala is responsible for sensing danger and signaling the rest of your body, your brain and body to pay attention. Your fingers are like your prefrontal cortex, 
That is the part of the brain that helps us manage emotions and makes complex decisions. When our brain is hijacked by our emotions, our amygdala sounds the alarm and our prefrontal cortex goes offline and we basically flip our lid. This leads to the inability to access the knowledge and wisdom we have in approaching a situation thoughtfully and appropriately. We're responding as though we are in mortal danger. In reality, it is our perceptions that have led us to overreact. Don't get me wrong, we must have the ability to fight, flight, or freeze when we are in real danger. The problem is there are so many of us that have consciously and unconsciously gotten used to staying vigilant at all times, prepared to fight or flight. And this is causing havoc in our personal and professional lives. Next slide. From an intensive study done by American Psychological Association released in 2000. 2018, the impact in actual dollars in the U.S. workforce was 300 billion, 300 billion in lost productivity and medical costs. Imagine what it will be a year or two from now if we do not address this expensive challenge. What do we do then? Next slide. We challenge ourselves to become keenly aware of our own thoughts, emotions, and actions that have led to our negative and positive results. We take time to be aware of where we are focusing our energy and if we have the capacity and skills to get to where we want to go. We understand our perceptions of reality and seek to understand the perceptions of others. And why do our perceptions sometimes not match our reality? Next slide. Because not of all of us value the same things. We don't all look through the same lens when we see the world. Some of us are very passionate about the things that motivate us to act, and others are more mainstream in their views. Neither is right or wrong. It just is. And wanting or expecting everyone to see things the way we do is impractical, unrealistic, and frankly, it will not serve us in the long run. We are all wired differently. And we all have different experiences that cause us to have different beliefs impacting the way we behave in a variety of situations. What do we do then? Do we just keep pushing through? Do we make ourselves just suck it up and get on with it? Well, more often than not, that's exactly what we do. That's exactly what I did until it all caught up with me. I realized I needed to find a new way of approaching all aspects of my life. I ignored where I was struggling and finally created so much misery for myself that I had to take time to assess how I got stuck in a place that felt like quicksand. I acknowledged my fears and sought out medical professionals who could assess and diagnose what was happening in my brain and my body. I reflected on what specifically I needed to address to get me out of the quicksand and start walking on solid ground again. I challenged the stories I had about myself and the stories I worried that others had about me. I learned and continue to learn skills and strategies to equip me to act in a way that has and will continue to change the course of my path towards physical, mental, and emotional wellness. Next slide. One of the most important things I've learned to address along my journey is my mindsets. I held on to the belief that the only way I could achieve what I wanted was to see or to have proof that it was possible. What I have come to learn is that if I do not believe what I want is possible, then I will not see the possibilities and opportunities that might be standing right in front of me. Next slide. It is important to visualize my hopes and dreams and to actually get there, it is imperative that I'm willing to let go of those fixed mindsets that no longer serve me and commit to living out of a growth mindset. Then and only then will I choose the right actions to experience what I long for. Next slide. I'm currently in the process of carving a new path towards my definition of meaningful success versus continuing to get lost like a rat in a maze and finding there's no cheese down those blocked paths I keep walking down. In moments of high stress, I've learned that I must first take a deep breath and then another until I have brought my prefrontal cortex back online and I have the awareness to assess the facts, address what's working, what's not working, and what's possible. 
And finally, I'm choosing to act in a way that gets me as close as possible to a win-win for myself and with others. If my outcomes don't match what I intended, I take another deep breath and manage the next wave of emotions that may come up for me. I slow down, increase my awareness of where I am and what I can do differently in the next similar situation, and I keep moving forward, honoring the energy and capacity I have in each moment. Next slide. I now challenge you to be brave and vulnerable and ask the questions you need to answer to equip yourself for the roller coaster ride that is life. Remember this the answers are in the questions. I'm going to say it again the answers are in the questions. If you aren't getting the answers you want or need, then ask a different question. Next slide. Thank you all for listening and go forth and be fabulous.